ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد we begin with the thanks and the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has allowed us to come here on this beautiful day of Jum'ah. And this is a very special occasion because we are gathering in a community setting in a time where this is not the norm anymore. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to come here and see one another in worship. He has allowed us to come here and allow our and he has allowed our hearts to connect to one another so that all of us together in one form can worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way that is islam is described is this extreme monotheistic faith where extremists when it comes to monotheism in the oneness of allah that he is one in his essence and his attributes and his actions and his ruling. And so this oneness that we ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a oneness that we try to bring into this world and see everything as one. And so our worship also needs to be seen not as Abdullah Ahbad and Amr praying, Rather, it's one congregation praying to one Allah. And so each, each and every heart here should be aware and cognizant of the heart that is next to him or her, behind or in front of him or her, and recognize that each heart, its state, its presence, its purity is going to affect this congregation. And so with that, we orient our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that we are not that one person who is preventing the rain to fall down upon us. As is as what happened with the people of Musa alayhi salam. So we want to orient ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this moment. And we want to orient ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single moment of our lives. In the first khutbah I talked about the tawbiyah that's necessary for a parent to give their child. Inshallah in this khutbah I wish to talk about the tawbiyah that one should go about for themselves. If one wants to engage in becoming a better person, a better slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person who is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the purest form, a person who loves the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a good way, in a righteous way, then this person needs to not only receive tarbiyah from others, like our parents and our teachers, but also the person must engage in training themselves, in rectifying themselves. And so one method that is used for this, there are many of course, but one method that is used for this is in the absence of a teacher, in the absence of suhba, good companionship. So one doesn't have the ability to go to a teacher. One doesn't have the ability to surround themselves with righteous friends. What is this person supposed to do in this situation? Many of us might find ourselves in this situation these days, 
when we're disconnected with the community, we're not able to participate in the organizations and in the masajid. We're not able to see our friends at school. What is someone supposed to do in this situation? The suggestion for this person is that they're supposed to look at the ills of society that they live in and remove those ills from their heart. So they look to the society that they live in. What are the things that the evil people are doing in this society? What are the things that my religion does not allow in this society? What are the things that are hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this society? And remove those things from one's own heart. And then look to the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would find beloved. And take those qualities and bring them into our hearts. An example of this is someone who wants to spread religious knowledge. They understand the importance that we're supposed to be holding firm onto the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet in order to instill these values into others, they engage in useless debates, argumentation with other people. Unfortunately, that useless argumentation and frustration that takes place in these debates that's meaningless is one of the ills of our society right now. So there should be another path that this individual takes in order to instill these good qualities in their families and their friends. And so what's another ill of society that we see today? We see that people are forgetting this concept of taklif. That we have been burdened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I can use that translation. We have been burdened with a responsibility. A responsibility that requires us to overcome the discomforts of this world so that we can engage in righteous activity. So that we can overcome the deficiencies that we face so that we can become better people, so that we can act towards good, so that we can worship Allah properly, so that we can follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah. But what is common in society now is that people are removing this concept of taklif, that I no longer have control of myself, I no longer have control of my emotions, I no longer have control over the trials and tribulations I face. I am no longer in control of the difficulties that afflict me. So now people are struggling with types of illnesses that either happen, they say it's mentally, they say it's physically, they say it's societal illness, they say it's intellectual illness. Whatever illness it, it is, whether it's valid or not, it is being used as an excuse to remove a person from acting and overcoming the trial that they are facing. And so it is our responsibility to not allow things that affect us in a negative way to be an excuse for us to turn away from our religious obligations. And what are our religious obligations? First and foremost, no trial and tribulation should ever take us away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No trial or tribulation in whatever sense should ever take us away from following the sunnah of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These things come at the utmost importance for us in our lives as Muslims. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you claim to love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me, meaning the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will love you. Our claim to this religion, our claim to Islam, is not an empty claim. 
we must hurt, hold firm to the sunnah of the hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What are our other religious obligations? To be kind to our parents, to be merciful to our children, to treat each other with respect, to not, to not discount someone's honor based off of hearsay, rather to uphold one another's honor based off of the fact that this person is a Muslim. So that we hold each other high in one another's sights. No person should ever leave thinking that they were better than someone else in a gathering of Muslims. When you see your fellow Muslim brother and sister, always view them in a light that you see them as higher than you. Because this will inspire you to greater good. But if we are complacent and we say, no, I am better, this, better than this person, arrogance will build in our hearts and we will be doomed in this life and in the hereafter. So this is a struggle that we face, we must overcome in this world to not allow anything to be an excuse. Nothing should be an excuse for us to defile our religious obligations, our worship to Allah, our following of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and of upholding the honor of our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ease in going about these actions. We ask Him for sincerity in our actions. We ask Him for the ability to continuously remind ourselves that we are one ummah. Seeing one of my Muslim brothers and sisters being harmed and their honor being taken away is my honor being taken away. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us truth as truth. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa zukna ittiba'a and allow us to follow it. And to allow us to see falsehood as falsehood. Allahumma arina al Ba'atila, ba'atila. And to allow us to stay away from it. Warzukna ijtinaba. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. And we ask Him for ease in these difficult times. And we ask Him to allow these times to be a means for us to return to Him free of sin, filled with mercy, filled with hope and love. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-Muslimin. Fastaghfiruh innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعلمكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأكبر وأقيم الصلاة